Welcome to Fashion 60 lecture on textile finishing. So the first question is, what do we mean by textile finishing? It is the final process before fabric is, fabric is cut into actual clothing or into apparel, uh, or its final end use. So it's the process that after you weave or knit it, um, give it some dye, some print. It's the final process before you can actually sell the fabric and get it cut to be made into clothing. There are many types of finishes. Some fabrics, like some of your garments, actually have more than one finish. Um, and it involves a variety, a lot of different effects. Things like making the fabric softer. Others are to make it actually stiffer. Others are to shrink it or pre-shrink. Um, to involve less shrinkage when the customer actually has the garment. Um, so shriek resistant. Um, others are to um, reduce the amount of shrinkage or wrinkles. Um, some are to make the fabric smoother. Others are to make the surface shinier. It's just all different types of varieties. So that's what we're going to um, talk about today. Now in terms of classification, there are four main classifications in terms of longevity of the actual finish. Now most of these finishes involve uh, chemicals and heat and mechanical processes. So depending on what process it is and what uh, treatment it is, um, the longevity varies. So for example, some are permanent, um, usually a chemical change um, and it, it's basically there for the entire life of the garment. So the idea is with normal use, uh, and this is assuming normal use, not abusing the fabric, but uh, normal use, um, that chemical will remain through the most of the entire life of the garment. So whatever that chemical is, that, that um, finish, it will stay there through the life of the garment. Um, so that's considered permanent. Durable basically means it lasts for most of the life of the garment, but towards the end, if you've had a lot of washes, you've used it a lot, it, it might start, it wears off. Um, it starts wearing off a little bit. It's definitely not as potent, so some of the chemicals are, are gone. Semi-durable means it lasts through several laundrings or dry cleaning, but then it's gone. So semi-durable, it means it's there for several washes. Of course, the more wash, um, and the more use you get, the faster that chemical is going to rub off. It's going to um, come off. And temporary just means um, it either completely removed or substantially reduced, okay, after the first time laundered. So that's what's considered temporary. So that means the chemical's there, but then you give it a first wash and then it's completely gone. So, um, so it depends on obviously the chemical treatment and what we're looking at. So, how the process starts. So there's a pre-treatment process um, that typically fabrics go through. They clean, they get rid of the soil um, and additives that have accumulated during um, the weaving and knitting process. So uh, we do have to like pre-treat before you put on um, um, some of these chemicals. So a very important pre-treatment process is scouring um, it's basically like laundering. You're basically cleaning it out, you're rinsing it, and then drying it. So you're removing, um, very important that you're removing um, dust and items that have been uh, deposited during um, weaving or knitting, um, and you're taking, you're cleaning it off. So you're making sure that the fabric is clean. Desizing basically removes starches on the warp yarns with enzymes. So sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes on the warp yarns, remember when you weave, you put the warp yarns first, and we put, they tend to put starches on the warp yarn to make it stiffer, right? So it can handle the stress of adding the fill yarns, right, the weft yarn. So um, once that's done, we add, they actually use enzymes to remove the starch on the warp yarns. Carbonizing removes leaf particles and other impurities from wool. So carbonizing is there when you have wool, um, not for any other of the treatments, but uh, for wool. So when you are dealing with wool fibers, it does remove particles because, you know, you're dealing with hair from a sheep and it does have a lot of, you know, items from, you know, the sheep being out, outdoors and all the, um, you know, leaf particles, dirt. A singeing, burning off projected fibers or filament splinters. You don't always go through this process, but it burns off these little fibers that are resting on the top, so it makes a smoother surface. Uh, so some have this, some don't. 
uh, bleaching, um, some have this, but if you need a bright optical white, um, they'll bleach and that'll um, obtain a pure white fabric. So scouring, this is what the cleaning process is. It's high heat, um, it cleans it, it, and then it dries it. So um, big, huge machines to scour your fibers and scour your fabric, a lot of heat, a lot of steam um, to clean it off. So sizing is adding starches and desizing is removing starches. So uh, make sure you know both of these. They will be on your quizzes and on your test. So sizing is when you add starch or a resin to give it extra body or crispness to make it a little bit stiffer. Um, they tend to be very temporary. Um, so a lot of it will wash off in that first wash and some are semi-durable, but they, they wash over time for sure. Uh, the more washes, the faster that chemical will rub off. Um, now some of it like uh, dress shirts will have it like on the collar to keep it that nice crisp look. Cause sometimes people are like, what do you mean you want the fabric stiffer? Don't you want it softer? Well, when you have dress shirts like this, you want this, the collar to be stiffer. And in fact, these products that you get, um, and back, you know, further back in the day when all, most men would wear business, you know, button up collared shirts, this was common products to buy. So starch, spray starch, and you'd starch the collar to make it stiffer. So it's, it's an industrial form of this, basically. So you can still buy some of these products. They're not as common anymore because, you know, we've gotten much more casual. So sizing adds the starch to make it stiffer. Desizing, D, meaning to, re, you know, not to remove, removes the starches. Okay, so you desize when you want those starches removed before um, selling the fabric. Carbonizing, again, is only for wool, and it's to remove the impurities. So this is like a home version of that. So um, I know people that um, uh, they shear sheep. Um, they, they, are, they work on a sheep farm. So if you do it at home, yeah, you even carbonize at home. Um, if you have a sheep farm, and yes, you are removing all the impurities. You don't just start uh, turning that into yarn as soon as you uh, remove it from the sheep. And singeing, it's flame, and it will singe, remove the top layer of fibers that are sticking out from the top. And this is a bleaching machine um, to get that crisp white. Because you don't get this bright, bright white um, automatically. You'd have to bleach it if that's what you need. Now, resins, they're applied. Oh, I'm so sorry, the IA is uh, missing there. But applied to wet uh, finished, uh, as a wet finish. Um, and it's used in many finishes. So resin is, is a type of chemical. It's typically used in cellulosic and blend fabrics, and it can either add stiffness, stabilize it, uh, resist shrinkage. So the idea is uh, to get the fabric not to be so flexible and to move so much. So that's what resins typically are used for in textile finishing. We also have aesthetic finishes. Um, this aesthetic means what you see. So the idea is to change the appearance. Uh, drapeability or, and or the hand or feel of the fabric. So that's what the purpose of aesthetic finishes are. Calendaring, fragrance, fulling, mercerization, napping, suading, plissé, shearing, softening, and stiffening. These are all types of aesthetic finishes. Uh, we are going into adding fragrance to fabrics. Absolutely. So if you look at that and you're like, is that for real? Yes. Um, and aesthetics, usually the appearance in the hand, but we are adding even things like the smell of the fabric, so it's appealing to more than one um, sense. Um, a very common one you should know, and you're, it's going to be on the test, is calendaring. And this is a process of, think of it as like an industrial pressing or ironing fabric at a really high speed. So the speed is, is fast, the temperature is really high, the pressure is really high, high pressure. What this tends to do is that it actually ends up giving shine and smoothness to the surface of the fabric. So there's glaze, serre, embossed, and moiré calendaring. So there's four different types of calendaring. You need to know the four different types. Um, glaze calendaring produces a high sheen on polished cotton or shints. So it's specifically for cotton and shints. It gives you a lot of shine. Um, so glaze, things like a glazed donut at, is shiny. Think of it that way. Um, Cire calendaring, very um, shiny, and it looks wet. It has a wet look to it. It looks like there's water that's dripped on there. Um, embossed, it produces a three-dimensional design, meaning it's raised. A raised design, all different types, um, but it's embossed. It's raised. It has a 3D effect, and moiré is 
looks like wood grain on the fabric. So a picture of all four, embossed, moiré, glazed, and serrate. So glaze on cotton and shins. Um, they glaze it, so whatever the fabric pattern or color is, it adds this high pressure, will add a nice sheen to it. Um, Cire just gives it a very wet look. It has even more shine than a glaze, and Cire is for all different types of fiber uh, content, so glaze is for cotton and shins only. Cire is for all, all different types of fabric. Um, and it gives it, it looks wet, it has even more shine than the glaze. Embossed has a 3D effect, um, so a raised effect. That's how you know it's an embossed calendar uh, process. And moiré looks like wood grain. So it literally has these lines and these curves, so it looks like wood grain on the fabric. Okay, so that's how you can tell them apart from all four types. Mercerization, we use for cotton. This adds luster. Um, it also adds strength, about up to 25% strength. It improves its uh, ability to take dye, brighter shades, better hand, and drapeability. Very common for sewing thread. So when you buy 100% cotton sewing thread um, and it says mercerized cotton, it's stronger. It, it takes the color better. Um, it's better than just straight 100% cotton thread. So if you're... Um, if you're not gonna get the blend with the polyester that's covered in cotton, um, if you're not gonna use that kind of thread and you're gonna use 100% cotton thread, the mercerization thread is best because it's stronger than just regular cotton thread. Um, it won't break as often, uh, it'll be smoother, it'll take the dye better. Um, so it's common in sew sewing thread, so it's better quality. Napping and suading is basically a mechanical, napping is a mechanical finish. And what it is, is the fabric passes through a rotating bristle, like a brush, and it raises the fiber on the face of the fabric. So things like flannel, flannel sheets, flannel shirts, that fabric goes through a napping process. So it goes through these rolls where it, ha it looks like it has bristles and it raises the fibers, it pushes the fibers up and it gives it kind of this soft, um, softer kind of raised fabric a little bit and just softer, um, so we call that uh, napping. Now, suading is like napping, but the idea is to provide a, a suede-like surface, um, but it's not produced with a brush like the bristles, it's produced with sandpaper-like material, okay? So this is after suading, so um, this is one before suading, and this is after. So it's using sandpaper material, or sandpaper-like material, whereas napping uses the brush. Okay, with bristles. Now, plissé is a permanent finish produced on cotton, so this will not wash off. Um, this is permanent, and this is on the, um, um, the idea is to add um, a puckered effect, right? Like it's puckered, um, and it does use uh, sodium hydroxide, and um, an example, seersucker fabric um, uses a plissé finish, and it's permanent, um, but there's other fabrics. Um, not, maybe the puckered effect can be more random, not necessarily so regular, or it could be a more regular process. Okay. Washes. Washes um, give, um, usually, typically, a worn effect. It softens the fibers, it gives it a worn effect. So like stone washing gives it an aged, worn look. It partially fades the fabric, it breaks the fabrics a little bit, softens them up. Um, acid washing uses bleaching process. So washes we tend to see on denim, so lots of washes. So if you work in denim, you need to be an expert in all the different washes that exist. So stone washing, acid washing. Um, there's also washes for um, garment dyeing. We're talking about textile finishes, but there's also for garment dyeing. So there's like crackle wash, stone wash, um, all sorts of different uh, mineral wash. They use different minerals to, again, break down the fabric. It does the same thing, it's just the garment's already sewn. Here we're talking about the actual textile, the actual fabric before you cut it into a garment. All right, and functional finishes. So this improves performance. Um, so the idea is for comfort, safety, for health. So the ones that you need to know about, antimicrobial, um, so the idea is it keeps the growth it stops or keeps the growth or even from beginning on microorganisms. So we're talking like bacteria, fungi. So um, fabrics where they assume you're going to sweat in a lot or it's going to be exposed to a lot of moisture so that, um, you know, mold and things don't grow on it. So antimicrobial. 
Um, for socks, very important for socks. Um, and again, things that would have exposure to more sweat. Um, Anti-static, um, it's chemical applied to reduce static, so you don't have static cling. Um, so that, um, that one tends to wash off after several washes. It's, it's not uh, durable, um, or it's semi-durable. Semi-durable, sometimes durable, but they'll wash off. Antimicrobial does wash off as well. Uh, crease resistant, reduces wrinkling and creases. This is also semi-durable, durable for the better quality fabrics, but it does wash off. The chemical will wash off after several washes. So it's going to depend on how often you wear it and how often you wash it. Uh, it's always strongest at the beginning, and as you wash, that chemical will wear off, and you'll have more wrinkling and creasing. A durable press, wrinkle resistance, uses resins to resist wrinkles, and same thing. Um, it'll, as you wash and dry it, it'll start uh, wearing off, and you'll start seeing it wrinkling more. So you have to take care of it a little bit more and actually possibly iron it. Um, flame resistant, retardant, so if you do ever kids wear, in particular sleepwear, this is really important, or if you go into a service textile. Um, so flame resistant is inherently resistant to catching fire. It will self-extinguish if it catches, um, but will not melt or drip. Um, this, so this is important for firefighters, um, for um, certain interiors uh, as well. It does make the item, the textile, very stiff. It's a very expensive chemical, so it's pretty pretty much reserved for uh, firefighting and certain specialty service sectors. Flame retardant is where you see more for kids wear and for interior. So if you're into interior design, flame retardant is really important. Um, it, it, chemical for your textiles, for your upholstery, for your carpet, for your draperies, because obviously those ignite very quickly. They'll help spread a fire. So the idea is a flame retardant will means it, it will still catch It'll still ignite, but it takes a while to ignite. It doesn't ignite instantly, and the, the, the burn will be slower. It slows down the burn instead of it instantly engulfed in flames. So this slows down the fire, so this provides safety. Now the problem is it will make the fabric stiffer. You do lose some of the softness of the hand, but it does enhance safety. Um, so this is very important for children's infant sleepwear. Often it's required, um, or you have to make the um, pajamas and the sleepwear very uh, snug fitted so it's not loose, which would increase the chance of it catching an ember and catching on fire. But um, very important in children's sleepwear and in interiors for your upholstery, your draperies, and your um, carpeting. Shrinkage control, uh, basically pre-shrinking before you sell the fabric to get it cut. So the idea is you actually wash it in high temperature, you shrink it. Um, that means um, it pre-shrinks, so things like thermal and certain cottons that shrink a lot. Um, going ahead and shrink, pre-shrinking it. Um, very common for t-shirts, so that way when the customer gets their first t-shirt and they wash it, uh, that the, the substantial shrinking you get from the first wash is already taken proof. Waterproof is water repellent. It resists, resists penetration of fabric, so all you need to know is that if something is waterproof, the chemical will make the water bead. Just like you see in this picture, it will bead up. It will not penetrate um, the fabric. Uh, nanotechnology is something that we're seeing more of where um, you're using uh, technology, so things like UV absorbent, anti-static, antimicrobial, moisture management. Um, uh, Nanotex is a good example that I wanted to show you. Um, uh, this company where they're doing these kind of uh, textiles and they've partnered up with several companies like JCPenney, Banana Republic. Um, so see, they have like things, um, you know, for comfort. So things like, uh, you know, active wear, um, things for home textile and for uh, business wear. But see, things like balancing body temperature, comfort, softness. So the idea is that they have, uh, they've perfected the moisture wicking. Um, and see, it says each fiber has been fundamentally transformed through nanotechnology and the result is a fabric that will allow for this. So I recommend that you watch the video um, and it gives you some examples um, and take a look at this because they do things for apparel and home textiles. So look at both of these sectors. But these are some of the things, again, odor control, wrinkle-free, moisture management. Moisture management has been the one area that they've really improved upon. So um, take a look at that. And last couple of things to mention. One is check for imperfections. So not just after you need 
need knit and weave your fabrics, but once you add these finishes, after you dye, after you print, check for imperfections. Check for imperfections on after the printing process, the knitting process, the weaving process, the dyeing process, but also after the finishing process. So look at um, if there's any defects on the fabric, um, if there's blot splotches or issues with the chemical, maybe more chemical falls on a certain area of the fabric. And sometimes if the concentration of the chemical or the pressure of the mechanical uh, process wasn't even, it can um, allow for bowing or skewing of the fabric. So this is just a review of imperfections because you want to make sure that your fabric is free from defects, right? So this is a selvage edge, so you want the crosswise and the lengthwise grain to be nice and straight. But if it starts bowing down, that's bowing when you can it starts bending uh, down instead of a nice straight angle on the weft, on the um, on the crosswise grain, and skewing is when it starts going in a diagonal, so um, in, in a particular direction. So check for imperfections after you add those chemical finishes. And lastly, this is um, from 2014 and going into what they project will be used up going into 2025, the top amount of finishes that they're expecting to be using and what they have used. Um, it's pretty consistent, as you can see. Um, definitely antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory is increasing, for sure. We have increased the use that from, especially in particular from 2015 and 2016, it has increased. Um, so that one has a little bit more use. Um, durable and wrinkle resistance um, has increased a little bit more, even though more, more of our clothes are more casual. Um, but antimicrobial... Um, this might be more important though if we do going into more unisex clothing that has more structure. I think that'll play a bigger role. Um, but antimicrobial definitely is being used more in temperature regulation as we see more active wear, um, especially to the main public, that has increased and you're going to see an increase in that as well. Um, so that's interesting. But everything else has been pretty and repellent release moisture. Um, as you can see, has increased as well. So um, these are just some of the projections that they're expecting. All right, thanks for listening.